Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another uh, Cars and Coffee with me, Kenny Brown, where over the next uh, hour or so, I'm going to be sharing some really good technical information, uh, answering a lot of your questions. And remember that the, the subjects I talk about are subjects that you guys want to learn about. So be sure to send, yeah, oh, I'll be answering questions live. So if you have any questions today, be sure to send them in the comment section. I'll get to them a little bit later. We've got kind of an interesting, interesting lineup for you today. Uh, Let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm re reading my notes. As, as you know, I can't get by without my notes from Carrie. OK, we're going to talk about uh, measuring for wheel clearance. Uh, we've got a little chart that uh, Forge Line puts out, and we're going to see if we can get that put into the uh, Speed Therapy Society resource section. Uh, uh, we're going to talk about the upcoming Speed Therapy Academy. We've had a number of people asking if we could give more information, so we're going to do that today. And now we're going to do kind of like a, a, a mini, uh, 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 a little uh, kind of a mini workshop on brakes. Uh, we've had, well, we, we, last week we did the uh, Transforming Driving Experience Workshop, and the thing that people were most interested in or got the most out of was brakes. So I thought we'd, we'd, do, uh, we'd kind of do some brake things here this morning. And then, uh, we, of course, we've got questions. And like I say, we've had a number of people asking about the Speed Therapy Society. So uh, we'll be giving some more information. I see Joe's here already and Calvin, uh, Facebook user. Who knows that? And I think Carrie says you have to click something so we know who you are. Otherwise, you're just the anonymous Facebook user. Okay. So let's go. Like, moving right along. Let's start with uh, measuring wheel clearance. Now, as you know, Forge Line is our premium wheel. I mean, we uh, we use Forge Line wheels a lot. I mean, they're 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 not cheap. They're a really expensive wheel, but they are the absolute best that's available. Period. And you're not going to find a better wheel than Forge Line. And they have a little chart. I'll kind of hold this up so you can see it. And you just kind of fill it out. And it uh, asks for a bunch. Of, this uh, asks for a whole bunch of measurements. And they give you kind of a chart over here to show where you're going to make those measurements and you fill out those measurements and you send it in and they'll they'll come up with the right wheel right wheel the right wheel spacing for you so i think what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have this uh, i only have a copy of this i don't have the don't have the scan so we'll get that scanned and we'll get it out to uh, the speed therapy society uh kenny brown speed therapy society private facebook group got every single word in this morning but yeah, I kind of asked it, it, it uh, look at this one backwards. It, uh, you know, it talks about the window that the, that the, uh, the, the wheel will fit in, the offset between the uh, face, the face of the wheel, where the calipers are. And oh, we're gonna talk about, see, yeah, I do have my, my caliper uh, template. That, that'll be under, under the brake section. The, uh, anyway, that, that's where we are on wheels. Uh, Again, let's see. I think what we're going to do, we're going to do, I'm going to do some questions. Then we'll talk a little about Speed Therapy Society, and then we'll do uh, do my little break thing. And I've, I've got I got stuff scattered all over this, this place to show you this morning. Uh, I got I got rotors, I got brake ducts, I got fluid lines, templates. So that'll be that'll be kind of good. Oh, oh, you might notice I am wearing my wrong side Speed Therapy Academy uh, polo shirt today. Uh, that's something when uh, people join the Speed Therapy Academy, that's uh, one of the first things they get. They get a little care package that has the, a notebook back there and, and a uh, polo shirt. So let's go down, let's go down some of the questions. VC uh, wants to know, how do I install an IRS in my New Edge Mustang? Well, that's <laughs> pretty darn simple. Uh, all you got to do is get one and bolt it in. It bolts right up. I mean, the new edge uh, came out in 99. That's when IRS came out. So all you got to do is get yourself an IRS and bolt it in. Uh, it, it's pretty darn simple. And don't forget, we're the only company in the aftermarket that not only understands the IRS, but completely supports the IRS package with a range of parts that you won't find anywhere else, up to and including a uh, uh, taking the carrier and cutting all the pickup points off and then putting them back on to, to really change the uh, – the, the geometry in the in the in the IRS. So uh, that's you know if if you're looking to do an IRS, give us a call. We're the only people that really know what they're doing with the IRS. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. This is this is, uh, this is actually a question that Maggie had in the uh, in, in the the workshop last week. We thought we'd, we'd uh, it was a really good question, so we thought we'd pass it along. So uh, S197, that's 07 Shelby GT500 with 750 rear wheel horsepower, which is a ton. I can imagine just how unwielding it can be when you put your foot down. It says uh, K-Link or Panther Bar. Will the K-Link lower the roll center enough to compensate with the stock K-member up front with the uh, with the low roll center? Okay, that's a really good question uh, because you know with with that much horsepower, you know the tail of the car is is kind of like wagging a dog all the time. Uh, the thing about the the K-Link is that it's a pretty sophisticated piece of suspension and it does amazing things it has creates more rear grip than any other live axle suspension period absolute period there's nothing that creates more rear grip the problem is it creates so much rear grip that we actually have to rebalance the car with springs the way up a rear spring rate if you were to put the k-link on with a stock k member uh, what would happen is you would as you go into a corner you turn the wheel and it would have really good turn in, and then it would just wash out. Uh, the rear grip would completely overpower the front grip, which is why it's, it's, it needs to be part of the full system. Uh, we really should have the front the uh, uh, the front grip kit. As you, as you people know, I've only got three parts of my S197 suspension, rear grip kit, front grip kit, and springs and shocks. And you really have to have that front grip kit to make the, uh, uh, to, to make the K-Lake work really well. Aside from that, we have a ton, a ton of GT500 people that are that put the, just just the rear grip kit on, which is it's a complete package. It's a system. I mean, it's a we, we sort of we sell parts, but we really don't sell parts. I sell systems, an en completely engineered system. Everything in the rear grip kit is engineered to work with everything else in the rear grip kit. That's why they just it has just an amazing transformation of the back of the car. In fact, what I do with geometry works so well. We throw the rear sway bar away. But that that would be uh, if you're keeping the stock K member, that would be a better starting point. Uh, because I tell people if they're going to upgrade their car in stages, rear grip kit, springs and shocks, front grip kit. So anyway, but the the uh, the K link actually, uh, we're going to do another uh, uh, webinar, uh, a third introduction a webinar of the K link is going to be, I believe, September 22nd. Uh, they'll be and it'll be on Zoom. So it, uh, it's something you're going to have to register for so you can get the link. So there'll be more information coming up on that in the near future. But, yeah, I mean, the, the, the rear grip kit just, I mean, that's the place to start if you don't do the front grip kit. So, okay, moving right along. This is, this is, this is another question that came up last week. In cooler climates, how do, how do I find a tire and brake pad that will perform fast for autocross? Well, here's the thing. As far as the tire, I mean, that's, that's a great question. The the thing is, a lot of different groups have different tire requirements, whether it's a open tire, 100, 200. Uh, and, and that's, that, you know, that's, that's a really hard question for me to answer because I don't know what tires they, you know, they allow. But certainly you want to get the, you know, the, the stickiest tires that you can get that's allowed within the class you're running. And as far as brake pads, I have a fabulous answer on brake pads. This will be coming up a little bit later. We're going to talk, you know, why 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 there's different brake pads for different applications and why i say you always use a street pad for the street and a track pad for the track and never the twain shall meet because they both do different things they both uh, operate in different temperature ranges okay uh let's see here's another here's another one i bought a uh, 03 mach 1 with slotted rotors how do i know the rotors are uh, correctly uh, on correctly or backwards Again, that'll be coming up too in the brake section. And that is, that is a really good question because it's absolutely super critical important that if you've got slotted rotors, you put them on correctly. Uh, we, had, uh, we had one customer bring his car in that someone had somebody out near where he lives looking after it. And he just, he, he just kept burning up the brakes and burning up the brakes. He was having a lot of problems with the brakes. So he brought it to us and it, you know, the, uh, it was pretty easy to figure it out. Whoever was working on the car put the rotors on backwards. So instead of pumping uh, cool air from the middle out to cool the, the, uh, the rotors, it was actually sucking air in and heating up the rotors. That's why it's burning up the brakes. So it's a good question, and I've got a great answer, which we'll be showing you a little bit later on. Uh, 
here's here's another one. Uh, do you like higher roll center to increase mechanical grip, or is the stock roll center already too high? Well, it's it's kind of like yes, no, and and not really. Uh, okay, is the, the stock roll center already too high? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the the roll center in a Mustang is where the panel bar crosses the center line of the car. That's the roll center, and that's the part of the car that the back wants to roll around, and that's pretty high. That's why if you're in a stock Mustang and go around the corner, you can actually feel the, the inside tire get kind of light. That's because the car is rolling so high. Uh, I move the roll center down as low as it can go on a live axle car, theoretically. Okay. Uh, what we do is we take the panner bar, we move the panner bar all the way down to the bottom of the differential. Now, I, I don't use Watts links, and a very good reason why we're a Watts link where the center pin is for the, the bell crank, that's the roll center. And you really can't move that roll center down very much. I mean, maybe an inch or two, but not a whole lot just because of the mechanism. Plus, you've got to have, you know, more attachments on the thing, you know, to pick up the, the, uh, the, the, the rods on it. So, you know, back in, in the Trans Am days of old, we used to take the, a Watts link and mount it horizontal to the bottom of the differential. Uh, so we got the benefits of the Watts and the lower roll center in the bottom of the diff. But that was easy because they had like an underslung chassis, so really easy to run rods right across the chassis. That's a little impractical. So, I mean, the easier solution, just take the panner bar, lower it down to the bottom of the differential, which works really well with the rest of the rear grip kit, which you know changes the, the side view geometry, the anti-squat. Uh, it just works really well. So, uh, you know, the, 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 you know, the, Roll center is increase the, the mechanic. Do you like a higher roll center? No, I don't like a high roll center. At all. I like a low roll center. Uh, you bring we in, in the whole uh, AGS 4.0 system, the rear grip kit, front grip kit. We bring the rear roll center down, the front roll center up. So as you go around the corner, the car doesn't want to roll out on the front tire. With a stock Mustang lowered, you've got the rear roll center is really high in the back, and the front roll center is underground, which means it goes around the corner, just got rolls all the way onto that outside front tire, which is why you turn into a corner with a Mustang going fast, and it starts to understeer because that tire is getting completely overloaded, all the weights on it. So anyway, low roll center, and the rear grip kit lowers it uh, to the bottom of the differential, which historically has been as low as you can take a live axle rear roll center until now. And if you sign up for the uh, uh, sign up for the uh, K-Link uh, webinar, uh, you're going to see how 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 ingeniously I have taken and lowered the rear roll center even more. That's why they have so much darn grip. So, okay, let's see. We've got through our questions this morning. Uh, I think I think. Uh, okay, why don't you jump in here? Let, let's take a minute to talk about the Speed Therapy Academy. Because we've had, actually, we, we talked about it in, in the workshop this week, and we've had a number of people uh, send in uh, asking if we could t if we could talk, explain more about it. And let me, real quick overview is the Speed Therapy Academy is something that grew out of what we, we started the Cars and Coffee just to answer questions. And as you guys know, it grew and grew and grew. And then we started doing like the little workshops and which shares a lot more information than I do in the mornings, but well, about the same, but it's kind of compact in the, in, the, in the one week. And then from there, for the people that really, really want to learn more, uh, you know, really want to see what's rattling around in my head, we just started the Speed Therapy Academy, which started out as a 14-week course, but I couldn't get it all in in 14 weeks. It's now a 16-week course. It's two nights a week, Tuesday and Thursday on Zoom. So it's just like being right in the same room with me so people can interact. And the Tuesday night, we call it an immersion session, where I'll take one subject and we'll just take a deep, deep dive. Uh, we just spend the entire evening on one subject. And then this, this Thursday night, it either is overflow from Tuesday or we have group coaching or uh, every couple of weeks we'll have a master class where some, some friends from the industry, their experts will come in, uh, talk about their area of expertise and then open it up for uh, our people to ask questions. So, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, you talk about if you really want to learn something, if you want to be, go to the track and not have, have to have anybody talk to you, you just do your own thing and you become really, really good. Uh, this, this is, you'll, you'll learn how to do that. Uh, I tell people the two worst places to get information are the internet and a paddock. So, I mean, there's, there's so much more to it. I'm just, that's just kind of like a, 
the, the big picture overview. Uh, Carrie, why don't you jump in here and help me out? Okay, well, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna just share because I, I think it's always good to see visually uh, what the program's about. So I'm gonna share the website on it um, and just we can kind of go through this together. So let's see, there we go. So anyway, uh, let me take this banner off here. There we go. So anyway, this is this is uh, the website, and Brad will be listing the link in the comments area. And what's interesting about this program is um, if you've gone through the workshop, you know what Kenny teaches, and if you've hung out in Cars and Coffee, you know. Well, this program goes beyond. I mean, it's like ten times or more what you're what you're already learning from him. He really shares a lot, and and you know, it's kind of like. Um, having a pro in your pocket. I mean, think about it, whether you're just starting out or if you have years of experience, um, you're just gonna learn a lot from him. And the, the reason, Kenny, you can tell him why you do this. Why do you do this? I mean, it's you have this mission in life and I think it's really cool. Yeah, you know, it, it's kind of like, I mean, I've, I've got a really, really long career. I mean, over 50 years in professional motorsports and building you know, great uh, street cars, track cars and championship winning race cars. And, you know, it's like, a long time ago, I just stopped looking on the internet because the information there was so misleading, so wrong. Uh, and I just decided, you know, we started to answer questions just to kind of get, I'm going to say real information based off of my experience. You know, not, not something I read somewhere, not something I heard from somebody else. You know, what I share is my actual physical experience of doing this for so long. And if you consider in, in the Mustang world, you know, I've won seven national championships in SCCA pro racing with Mustangs. So I know a little bit of what I'm doing, you know, and I've worked for, I've worked for, I've worked for IndyCar teams. I've worked at the Daytona 500 for teams multiple times. Uh, I've, I've just, I've just done a lot of stuff. So, you know, like there's a lot of stuff rolling around in there and, you know, I'm point in my career that, you know, why, why don't I, why don't I share this? I mean, this give people real information. Uh, I mean, I can't take it with me. And there's a lot rattling at round up there. So if I can just dump some of it out and people can absorb that and get real quality information, you know, I'm really happy. Because the whole idea is if I can if I can help stop you or help you from not making one of the mistakes I made a long time ago, it's it's a good day. Because you know, if you if you gotta plod through on your own, it takes a long time to figure this stuff out. So, you know, why why not, you know, cut it short and just uh, hear what I have to ha have to share with you. So Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll put this back up. There we go. So anyway, I'll just kind of briefly go through this. Um, so at the top, it's, it's kind of like what Kenny teaches is like, if you went through one of his workshops or even this, he tells you why things happen and, and things like that. But the workshop really digs deep into how how uh, to take your driving passion to the next level. And, you know, it, what what we found out, there's nobody in the industry doing this. There's nobody sharing their knowledge. And so, you know, it's, if you want to learn something and learn from a pro, this is this is the course to take. Um, let's see. Also, um, this is for, again, it's learning how to take your car to the next level. And it's, this is for the serious driver from beginning to advance to pro. I mean, we have people, and it's also for a streetcar, performance streetcar people, all the way up. To, we have people in NASA in the group. So all of them get something out of it. And so it's really about not knowing, uh, not only knowing the why, but how. And by the end of the course, he he takes the, the course and teaches the fundamentals of car building and then takes it into car preparation, into car setup, and then into tuning, uh, tuning at the track if you're a track person, and then also driving instruction. And it's really pretty interesting. Yeah, so you do virtual, virtual driving co driver coaching. And so, and w w again, it's broken up into three things, the immersion uh, learning session, which is on Tuesday nights, that's Kenny's whole program. And then every other week we have a master class um, which is, is great to meet these industry's ex experts. There's no place else that you can really have one-on-one -on -one time for an hour with an industry expert. I mean, you, you might run into one once in a while and you can spend a minute or two with them, but this is a full hour you get to spend with them. And again, it's on Zoom so you can interact back and forth. Kenny also does group coaching and that's where somebody brings in a problem or a question and then he solves their problem or question 
uh, in a group uh, coaching environment so you can learn from them and what Kenny says. Um, also, a little bit more about what's in the program. Again, it's 16 week immersion session, eight bi weekly coaches, uh, eight uh, bonus uh, master classes. And what's really interesting is this is a community of like minded performance individuals. We have a, a Speed Therapy Academy uh, private Facebook group where you can meet with everybody. Um, and it's just a really cool community. And I mean, think about it. This is a very exclusive group. Uh, there's not too many people have gone through it yet. And it's, you know, there you have Kenny Brown as their master instructor or teacher in there. Um, we also have a virtual learning resource center. Uh, you have your own website where if you miss one of Kenny's classes, it's pre-recorded. Uh, so you can go to the your uh, website uh, learning center pick up what, where he left off, and you also have access this for, to, for six months. So you'll be able to, from the day you start through six months later, you can uh, access this in case you may miss anything or want to watch it afterwards. And then uh, this is a academy notebook and certificate of completion. There's another thing that we're offering in it, and then I'll get back to some other items on here, is we are offering um, for the Speed Therapy Academy members, they all get a, a academy discount. Um, and Kenny doesn't discount many of his products because they're pretty premium products. I don't discount and, any of my products. Yeah, no, you don't. And uh, so this is like 10% off all Kenny Brown products, 10% uh, off bare brakes, um, $150 each off each forge line wheel. Um, and it depends on other manufacturers how much discount we have. So you'd have to call in on that. And also uh, we give a brake bedding on the G-Lock brakes that we sell. Yeah, break, we uh, get, give the complimentary uh, bedding of the brake pads so you don't have to wait, wait waste a whole section or session uh, getting your brake pads bedded in. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay. And so anyway, um, the program is, again, is 16 weeks. Everybody that's gone through it has just just raved about it and says it's helped them so much and is very much worth the price of admission. We recommend this program if you're starting a car build or you're in the middle of one and you don't know where to go next, um, or if you're, you know, want to do more track, you want to improve your driving. This is this is the course to take. Um, so I'll show you. Yeah, First, you just want to learn more about what I talk about. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Um, so anyway, there's there's a couple ways to pay for it. Is um, uh, paid in full is $2,400. If you uh, um, want to do monthly payments, it's six fifty per month for four months. And then we also, if the six fifty is a, a bit too much for you, we also have payment plans that are as low as $150 per month to attend. Um, what Kenny's running right now, because we just came out of the uh, Transform Your Driving Experience workshop. Actually, it, what Carrie is running. <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, yeah, let, let me, let me, uh, the, the reason for this is in the last academy, we uh, offered a scholarship and we got so many uh, applicants that were really worthy. It was super difficult. Uh, so what she decided to do this time instead of uh, offering one person a scholarship is to offer everybody a partial scholarship in the early bird special. So that's how this, this all came about. So I'll, I'll let you carry on from there. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. And it's uh, so six hundred dollars off. So it's two thousand dollars, and you can put that over a payment program. But you need to call us if you need a payment program on that. But it's two thousand um, dollars, and I mean, what a deal! And the the thing is, is this is this is running through. If you read the little fine print here, it's running through Tuesday. Um, August 31st. So if you want to take advantage of this, make sure you jump on. We have limited numbers uh, for this early bird special. I think we have, what, seven spots left, Ken, for the early bird special. So if you're interested, make sure you jump, jump on and take advantage of that opportunity. Um, and here's uh, some of the Academy members talking. I'm not going to play it right now. Um, but I mean, all of the Academy members that have gone through are just over the top of what they've learned. Uh, here's a quote right here. Kenny's a powerhouse of invaluable information that you can't get anywhere else. Well worth the price of admission. So if you want to know more about this, uh, just give me a phone call. Brad, if you want to put my information and your information in the comments, um, do that. And also you can click uh, on this link and see this webpage so you can see um, 
learn a little bit more about it. And I, I think this is cool. Here's Kenny, his, his quote. My life's mission and purpose is to help more people like yourself enjoy their car lifestyle by sharing that culmination of my lifetime of experiences in professional motorsports and the high performance car building arena, helping you maximize your driving experience. And that is so true. So anyway, if you want to learn the how uh, and really up your performance uh, driving and your driving experience, this is the class to take. And that's all I'm going to say, Kenny. Okay. So. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to amend that a little bit. This is my second uh, mission. And my first mission, mission was to be, learn as much as I can and be the absolute best. Uh, so that's, that's kind of where it's gotten me to today. Uh, you know, like I say, I've, I've been there, done a lot. So, uh, yeah, I, you know, why, why, why shouldn't I share this to people? I know we've had uh, uh, some people say competitors are trying to sneak in and see some of this stuff. And, and we're the, if, if you've been with me for a while, you know, I talk about we're most copied people in the Mustang market. Uh, but it's interesting. People copy what I do, but they really don't understand why. So uh, when, when you take the Academy, you'll understand a lot of the whys and why I do things. I have a comment right here. This might, it says Facebook user, but this must be somebody from the uh, Speed Therapy Academy. It says, make sure to check out the Academy. There's an amazing promotion. Oh, some, no, this is probably Brad. Amazing promotion going on. Okay, I thought it was a, a testimonial there. But I know we have some Speed Therapy Academy alumni in here today. So speak up. Um, let us know that you're there. I think I saw Joe Johnson there. So anyway, Kenny, go ahead. Uh, I forgot what I was talking about. He jumped and interrupted me. My train went. I okay. think we. I think we are going on to. You're going to start on the brakes. Oh, brakes. Okay, brakes. Uh, I'm really big on brakes. Brakes are important, and I like really, really good brakes uh, for a couple of reasons. <laughs> Number one, they help you stop when you're going really, really fast. And uh, secondly, you can use the brake your brakes to really significantly improve your lap times. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But the first thing you need to know about brakes is, is actually uh, energy. Now the your Mustang is what, 37, 800 pound uh, lump of mass rocketing down the straightaway at 120 miles an hour. And there's only a few ways to slow it down or stop it. You know, trees, guardrails, and concrete barriers are the least desirable, although they are very effective. Uh, it's, it's more desirable to use your brakes. So what happens when you put your foot on the brake, the brake pads and rotors take that kinetic energy of that mass moving at high speed and turn it into heat energy. That's why brakes get so hot. They're taking kinetic energy and converting it into heat energy. And by converting it into heat energy, they're, they're pulling, they're slowing that mass down. So that's why, you know, a lot of people understand the importance of knowing the heat in, in your braking and your brake pads and your rotors. So we're going to start with, let's see, what's this? I got a lot of stuff hanging around here. I think I'll start with my, uh, my big old rotor back here. Okay. This is a two-piece slotted rotor. I'll tip this down a little bit. Uh, if you're not going to, if you can't afford a big brake package and you want to improve your brakes, get a hold of this. We'll get you set up with two piece slotted rotors. <clears throat> now, two piece slotted rotors do, do a lot of things. First, they're, they're lighter than the factory. Secondly, they have these slots. Now, what these slots do <clears throat> is it has two functions. One is to help clear brake dust. The second is when you've got a, a, a brake pad on a rotor, uh, at high temperature, they actually will build up gas on the trailing edge of the pad. Uh, back when we were in the early days in, in, uh, uh, in the 86 Celine cars, uh, in the race in the, the Escort, I mean, the uh, uh, SCCA Pro Endurance Series, I mean, we had uh, obviously had to change brakes multiple times in 12, hour ra 12 and 20 hour races. What happened is the brake pads would come off and the fronts would be worn out and the back of the pad would about half half of the brake pad there. Well, the reason for that is the gases were building up at the trailing edge of the pad and you weren't getting, we weren't getting a good contact so it was wearing the fronts out. By having these slots, it'll, it'll evacuate the gases that get trapped at the back of the pad. Okay, another thing <clears throat> is that 
because the outer ring is steel and the inner ring is aluminum, they don't really transfer as much heat from the rotor into the wheel bearing or into the wheel. So that's why they run so much cooler. And they've got, they're, they're vented inside, so they actually pull the air out. Now, a brake rotor cools itself from the inside out, which is why we put brake ducts in the middle. We'll get to that in a minute. <clears throat> Another thing, while I've got this up here to talk about is uh, temperature. So the question is, how do you know what temperature your brakes are really running at? Uh, I know people ask if, if they can use a uh, like a, a laser uh, temperature thing to check their, their brake temperature. No. All that's going to tell you is what the cool down temperature is of the rotors. What you want to know is what is the peak temperature of the rotors. I don't know if you've seen like endurance racing or at night <coughs> the uh, going into a corner, all of a sudden the brakes just glow bright red. That's because they're getting really, really hot. That's the temperature you want to know. What is the maximum temperature those pads are getting up to? Now, this little thing right here, that's called brake rotor paint. Uh, it's really handy stuff. I think we sell more of this than anybody else in the aftermarket. Uh, and it's just, it's one color. You know, back when I started, you had to have five different colors and you paint them all on. And each color would kick off at a different temperature. So you had to check all the temperatures to see what temperature your, your brakes were running at. But with this, it's just one color. It's really cool. And they give you a little chart that kind of tells you, uh, it's, I see if you read that or not, but you match the color up to the temperature range, and that'll tell you what temperature your rotors are running. Now, mine typically run on my cars about 1,200 degrees, so I pick brake pads out accordingly. Now, when, see, because I got it up here, I want to not touch on, on brake ducts. If you're on, if you're if you're doing track, uh, you really have to cool your brakes. Like I say, my my brakes on, on my Mustang run about 1,200 degrees with brake ducts. Without brake ducts, they'd be off the chart. And my brake ducts are completely unique. Although somebody else is sort of copying it, but it's been I've been doing this since SN95 days. But if you notice the uh, it's not round. It's, I use a three-inch brake duct, but it's oval. Well, the reason for that is by making it oval, we can actually, if you can see, all of the air coming in goes directly into the eye of the rotor. So 100% of the air hits the eye of the rotor, and once it's in there, the, the, the veins will pull it out. So that's why they're squished, because we can get all the, all the air into the rotor. Now, there's some, some people have like four inch brake ducts, which you'd think would be better, except if you really, if you saw how that three inch just barely fit in there, a four inch actually like goes into part of the, of the rotor. So that does a couple of things that aren't really good. Number one, it's putting air on the interface of the rotor. So it's actually getting <clears throat> a different flow of air than the outer side of the rotor. And also, as the, as the air comes in and hits it, it kind of disrupts the flow because it has to tumble and, and go around it into the center. We did a we did a back to back test uh, 2010 with my three inch brake ducts on my car and the four inch brake ducts on the Ford Racing FR 500 S cars. And the overall rotor temperature was similar. Uh, mine was just a few degrees cooler, but the big difference is. Uh, my rotor temperature on mine was the same inside and out, where with a four inch, it was cooler on the inside and hotter on the outside, which explained uh, why the outside pads wore more than the inside pads. So that's uh, that's why brake brake ducts are so important. Now that's the that's the S197 brake duct. We've got it for SN95 again with the oval, and something interesting for the 550 cars. It got such a big rotor, we didn't have to squish it. So just a, a three inch, a three inch hose goes straight into the rotor and cools it down. Okay, another important part of uh, brakes is uh, there we go. Uh, braking is brake fluid. Uh, you really, if you go on track, you absolutely have to have high temperature brake fluid because the, the, the high heat will boil regular brake fluid. And what happens is it boils, you hit the brake pedal, and you got nothing. You, know, you got absolutely nothing. So we uh, we actually switched over a year or so ago to the, the bear is having this formulated in the UK. 
and it's uh, about the highest dry boiling, boiling point of 608. And it's uh, a lot more cost effective than some of the fancy brand name brake fluids. So that's, that's what we've switched to. And, you know, at the track, I tell people, bleed your brakes a lot. Bleed them before the event, bleed them Saturday, and bleed them Sunday. And I always like fresh brake fluid in my calipers. Okay, something else that uh, if you don't get a big brake kit and you do tracks, uh, stainless steel brake, uh, brake lines. But the reason for that is, you know, stock, stock brake lines are rubber. And certainly it's, it's heavy duty, you know, stress tested and all that. But when you start seeing really high uh, temperatures in your brakes, you know, the fluid's going to get hot, uh, which means the, the brake line is going to get hot. And, you know, if rubber starts getting hot, it starts to get a little soft. So you do have, you do have the, the opportunity for, if you're getting really hot brakes, you hit the brake pedal and that, that brake line is going to just, well, just a little bit, which is going to take some of your pedal feel away. Or if you've got stainless steel lines, They've got it's it's a, a, te a solid Teflon inner lining, which means there's absolutely no give at all. I mean, you got a rock hard brake pedal no matter what. So that's that covers rotors, uh, paint, ducts, fluid lines. Well, let's talk about brake pads themselves. Let's see. Okay, here's a little chart I put together of, of the, the brake pad system that we've kind of developed. Uh, this is what we, we, we switched over to about a year or so ago. I was working out really, really well. And you can see each one of these uh, brake pad compounds has a different operating range. Uh, and if the street performance goes from 0 to 800, now a regular OE type pad, I, mean, I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing that they're, you know, they're, they're, they work from like minus 20 to maybe three, 400 degrees. Uh, but above that, they'll wear out really fast. There's, th there's three elements to brake pads, wear, heat, and friction. Uh, what, if you're living in the, the optimum range for the brake compound, you get good wear, good friction, and good heat. If you have a, a compound in like a street pad uh, that on track, and you start getting above the operating range of the, uh, the compound, then the, the wear increases dramatically and the friction decreases dramatically. So that's why you have to, I always have to pick the right brake pad for the right application. So these are the pads that we now offer, and I, I'll kind of go through them. You know, the street pad, street performance is good from zero to 800, which is a little more than other uh, performance street pads. And then we've got an autocross pad which uh, goes from zero to a thousand, which, which should be uh, more than enough temperature uh, to handle, uh, you know, brake temperatures on autocross. In fact, a lot of autocross could probably get by with the street performance, but you know, the autocross pad up to a thousand degrees would be even better. And then there's, you know, the uh, uh, novice track. If it's the first time or so on track, I mean, you're not going to see really high brake temperatures uh, because you're not going to really get into really hard braking. But after a couple of events, you're going to start breaking harder and harder, and the temperature is going to continue to rise. So the uh, you know the going from 74 to 1250. Now this is this is also a pad you could drive to the track, although because it's more of an aggressive compound, uh, I really wouldn't be recommended for daily driving because you'd probably pick up some dust and noise because it'd be operating below its 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 uh, desired operating temperature. But that's, you know, from 74 to 1250, uh, you know, kind of gets you for, through the first couple of track days. And you can drive it to the track. Now, the next pad up is from 118 to 1400. Uh, you know, my brakes <clears> on <throat> my car run about 1200 degrees. Uh, and this, this, would, this would be an okay pad for that. Uh, but that 1200 degrees is really close to 1400 degrees. I want to be closer to the middle of the operating range. So the next pad up goes from 173 degrees to 1800. Uh, that, that is kind of like a really good pad for track days because uh, if you're running 1200 degrees, that's sort of in the middle and that's where you want to be. But you, you know, there's like little combinations like that. for a lot of track people, I'll have them use the, uh, the 1800 and 1400, 18 on the front, 14 on the back. Uh, Maybe for, for some people that really aren't advanced, might even go to the 1,400 front and 1,200 rear. 
Uh, and then we, we keep going up from there. I mean, you, the harder you drive, the faster you go. Uh, the more aggressive brake pads you need, the more temperature you make. And then we've got a race pad that's from 225 up to 2100. And then we've got a, a pro race pad that goes from 610 to 2100. Now, I had, uh, you, you really need to match your, your pad to your temperature. Uh, I had, I talked to a gentleman maybe two weeks ago in, in one of my 15 minute consults. We were talking about brake pads, and he said, you know, the, the brand that we were using now, he just he didn't like them at all. He said they were terrible pads. And I said, well, what compound were you using? He said, I was using the 18. He said, the guy that sold it to me, he said, I have a, a heavy car. It was GT500. I have a heavy car. I needed the best brake pad. Well, you take a look at that, and the operating range is from 610 to 2100, which means that, you know, if, if your brake pads aren't operating in that 14, 15, 1600 range, uh, they're out of range. So what was happening. He had too aggressive a pad. He wasn't getting them nearly hot enough. So they didn't work very well. Uh, they made a lot of dust and they squeaked. Uh, that's, that's something, if you ever hear like a, a car on track, a, on, uh, on a racetrack and the brakes squeak, their, their compound is too hard. They need to drop down a temperature range. So that's why it's important getting the right range for what you're doing. And you, know, you can, uh, if, if, you're, if you're interested and, and need to have some direction, uh, you know, sign up for one of my 15-minute consults. We'll talk about your, your car, what you're doing, and I'll come up with some compounds for you. The other thing is these can be pre-bedded. Now, I mean, what is brake bedding? Well, anytime you've got like a competition pad, they have to be bedded. What that means is they have to, they have to reach critical temperature so that all the volatiles from manufacturing uh, boil out for the pads. And that's done by uh, repeated high speed stops. Uh, stop, let it cool a little bit, stop, let it cool a little bit. And you keep doing that until one, one time you hit the brakes really hard and the pedal is hard as a rock and you smell brakes. That tells you that that's the time to stop. And you take your foot off the brakes and you, you, you gently drive back to the pits, let them cool completely. And the next time you go on track, you have just you have demon brakes. So with these, we can get them pre-bedded because it, typically that that will eat up at least one session bedding brake pads. And so this kind of eliminates that. And you just put them on and go. So and then also with the rotors, you need to kind of season them. You got new rotors. You can't go out and hammer the brakes. You got to, you know, bring bring the temperature up gently to get to the point of operating. So that's uh, that's that's why it's it's so important to get the right the right brake pad for the right application. Uh, you know, if you've got too soft a brake pad, uh, like the 1200, and you're running a Mustang pretty fast, and you're going to be right up on the edge of that 1200 degrees, and they're going to, will it take it? Yeah, it'll take it, but you're going to get see a rapid increase in wear and a decrease in friction. So, and then the same thing, if you get too aggressive a pad, uh, it's just the opposite. It's not going to work. So. Okay, that's my little chart on brake pads. Uh, I think I think that's everything on brakes today. That was quick. I lost Carrie. She's up there somewhere. Hello. Okay, well, while, while she's finding herself, uh, this is the this is the, uh, the polo shirt when you get when you join Speed Therapy Academy. You also get a notebook, and you've been with me a while. I just just harp on notebooks. You have to have a notebook for everything. Notebook with lots of dividers in it. So for each each of the uh, each of the sessions, you can take notes. There's paper in the back. You can take notes and uh, and keep them in your notebook because that stays with you forever. I mean, they're, they're, you know, I, I talk about notes for everything. So while while she's while she's still missing, uh, this this is this is the curriculum. I'll just kind of go through it real quick. I see her picture if I haven't heard her. So, oh, I'm here. <laughs> so. Okay, you want me to go through the curriculum real quick and then we'll oh, do questions? Of course. Of course. Okay, week one is, you know, kind of like welcome, getting acquainted, and that's where we start on chassis tech. Uh, week two gets into uh, Uh, week two starts at suspension and suspension geometry. Week three is more suspension geometry, but something I'm extremely expert in. Fell over. Uh, that's, that's why my suspensions work so good. I mean, I've been studying Mustang suspension geometry for 30 plus years, 
and very few people out there understand geometry. If they did, they would never use a torque arm. We, we, we talk about that quite a bit. Uh, and then uh, let's see, uh, week four is shock absorbers. We go through a lot of shock absorbers. In week five is brake tech, which is a, a big expansion of what I just talked about today. Uh, let's see, week, week, uh, week uh, four or week five is more brake tech. Week six is wheel and tires. Uh, seven is uh, cooling, plumbing, radiators, oil coolers, along with the plumbing that goes with it. We have a really good guy that comes in. Uh, so for wheels, uh, we have uh, uh, Steve Shard uh, join us from Forge Line Wheels, and he gives a master class on wheels. Really, really interesting. And then uh, on, for the radiators and plumbing, uh, we have Eric from BAT, where we get our, like, our AN lines, uh, you know, our air equipment and all that. And we had uh, Fluidine on last two, Ryan. Yeah, from yeah we had cooling. We, we had uh, was Ryan from, from Fluidine talking mm -hmm. about radiators, which, again, a lot of interesting information. Uh, and then week eight is engine and driveline. See, week nine is aero. Aero is a big one that everybody really, really likes. Uh, and it takes two weeks. I got, I got so much information on aero to share. That's, that's two weeks or two nights. And then, uh, let's see, week 10 is safety, and we had Ben from Impact uh, Racing come on and talk about restraints, and uh, uh, he explains things that you never really thought about in, uh, in harnesses. And then we also talk about uh, uh, fire systems, uh, fire extinguisher, fire suppression systems, and we had, I uh, uh, can't remember his name, from, from uh, SPA, yeah, talk about fire suppression systems, which is really interesting. Uh, and then let's see, 11 is we start getting into prep, car setup, uh, 12, at the track, learning how to tune, 13, how to use your bedometer, you like that, how to use your bedometer for track tuning, and then we get into checker flag week, we start the virtual driving coaching, and then uh, after that we do uh, actual uh, real virtual driving coaching where I, I, people send in their videos and uh, we'll go through and, uh, I'll ch you know, watch the videos and, uh, you know, I'll kind of give them some suggestions on how they might be able to, to uh, drive a little better, you know, use more of the track and be a little quicker. Uh, so that's kind of it. And then, uh, uh, yeah, I think the, the, uh, the virtual coaching, somebody, somebody made us a wise ass comment, a number of, uh, this is a while back that we said do virtual driving coaching and they kind of made a snide remark that that's impossible. Well, uh, yeah, like I say, don't believe what you see on the internet. So, I, okay, I think I covered. Oh, no. Oh, and also, when you graduate, you get a certificate of completion. And that, it, it comes in a frame, ready to hang on the wall or put on your desk. And something we started this last one, we're going to continue if we can get them, is I, I talk, I, I spend like two weeks talking about you know, at track and uh, cause and effect. And it's all based off of what I learned back in the 70s uh, from a guy called Carol Smith. He wrote a series of books back then that were, you know, I just, I just, you know, I absorbed every one of them. It was like uh, tune to win, build to win, engineer to win, drive to win. And uh, I, a lot of what I, my early career, came from those books, education. And I was talk, telling people that, you know, they've been out of, pr out of print for a while. And I just looked up to see, if, you know, what they were, if there was any like online, uh, like used copies, only to find out they're back, they're being published again. And one of the things that they're being published is, is as an engineer in your pocket guide, which is has all, all the stuff that we talk about uh, in the, in the academy, all the cause and effect, uh, are in here, so you can put put this in your toolbox and take it with us. That a little extra bonus that we we started with this time is last time. So, okay, are we ready for questions, or do you have anything else? Um, yep, I just want to mention since we're still in the academy that there is that uh, six hundred dollar early bird special that is running through Tuesday, September, or, yeah, August thirty first. Uh, so if you're interested, click on the link in the comments. You can learn more about Speed Therapy Academy. You can give me a call and we can talk about it, see if it's right for you. Um, but anyway, that's a really good price. It uh, only runs $2,000 and you can pay it over, uh, uh, over time. So 
And let us get, right now it's time for questions. So if you have any questions, we will go to there. Also, um, I forgot what I was going to announce, something. I will think about it. Here's a question from Andrew. Uh, I says, I would like to run a 10 inch wide OEM Boss wheels on my 05 S197, but Ford labels them as rear only. I remember you saying that your apex wheels work. What are your thoughts? Uh, the reason it's saying they're rear only because they probably got a different offset from the front. Uh, I think uh, you know, most, when you get into wider wheels on a Mustang, most of them have a different offset for front and rear. Although we, with the Apex, we do, we, there are some that we can run both front and rear on, I believe. Now, that's going to be a rich question. If you call in uh, and ask Christian, a typical setup is a 1910 front, 1911 rear, with either a 285 35 front, a 295 30 front, or, and a, a 305 rear, or some cases, a 315 rear. So, yeah, my favorite, my favorite just, you know, non, non, uh, non uh, split system is. Uh, 19 by 10s to 285 35s all the way around. That's, that's a really nice combination. Uh, unless you're running stupid power. I mean, that works really, really well. Plus, you can rotate your tires. Okay, I know what I was going to announce. Brad did add the link to the wheel tire fitment okay. um, template. So uh, if you look in there, maybe, Brad, you can add it again. Just That's really important for your getting the right wheel fitments. So. Yeah, right. That's a big thing. Yeah, inset. Yeah, and yeah. Did you never explain what it was for? Why you use it? Or well, is it just too elementary? But the brake thing. That's that's yeah. because I mean, it, there. You got to be able to. It's about offset and width and tires. I mean, you got to be able to fit them within. You know, in that little box, and <clears throat> the offset is how much the wheel moves in and out. And if you get the wrong offset, <clears throat> it might be in too far. It might be out too far. So that's why it's important to get all those measurements and they can figure out the correct offset for the wheel that you're running. Okay. okay. Here's another question from Rory Merrick. Uh, is uh, braking preferred over gearing down and coming off the loud pedal? Uh, you know, it's kind of a preference. Now me, I use brakes. Uh, you know, when I'm coming up the way I do it on, on track driving, uh, race driving is completely different. Because you're using, using maximum threshold braking, you stay in the car on its nose every single time. If you do that for track days, you're going to wear out a set of rotors and, and pads in a weekend. Uh, but what I do, I mean, it's, I'm coming down the straightaway. I'll just get on the brakes. And I don't hit the brakes hard. I do a, a continual pressure. That's kind of like a curve up. And, and then once I get the uh, kind of like down to where I'm about ready to do my turn in, I'll do a little blip, drop it into the third gear and go around the corner. Uh, you can, you know, you, you take your foot off and let the engine slow it down, but the engine is not going to be nearly as effective in slowing the car as the brakes are. Uh, and also, if you do that a lot, that has a tendency to kind of maybe suck oil up past the rings. So you know, I, I more often would recommend to use brakes uh, and uh, save your engine. Okay. Okay, cool. Guess who's in the house? Brian Grinnell. Hey, Brian. Are you going to be there Wednesday night at the Speed Therapy Alumni? Oh, that's right. She's got to stay every month. There's an alumni meeting, first Wednesday of the month. And uh, it, it's kind of interesting. The alumni has kind of turned into like a private fraternity. So it, it, it's, it's kind of like a cool thing. Okay. Uh, Brian's comment was uh, he has 285s all around, that, and they, that works for him. Yeah. I mean, that 285s on 10-inch wheel uh, is, is a really great combination. Okay, if you have any questions, this is last fall call for questions. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments and Kenny will answer them. Here we go. Uh, Kobe Ward, is the bear uh, Erasby Plus for GT500s and a Plus 2 for the rear a good upgrade for S197s that have the GT500 brakes? That is a great question. And to me, it's a two-parter. One, when I was talking about two-piece slotted rotors, I forgot to mention that uh, we don't put big brake kits on the back of Mustangs because of the C-clip axles. Uh, when you put a brake, big brake kit on, the caliper's hard mounted, the rotor's hard mounted, and the C-clip axles move a little bit, which gives you like really nasty pad knockback. So what we do instead is Bear has this really cool upgrade kit. Uh, it's got a bracket that moves the stock caliper out, 
and for a 14 inch rotor. So put a 14 inch two piece slotted rotor on the back, retaining the factory caliber. The GT500 is a kind of a different animal. Uh, and I can't remember the years, but it might be the later ones. I, I can't remember for sure, but the GT500 rears, we actually have to change like the bracket or something back there to the GT to use the, uh, the oversized rotors. Uh, I can't remember what years they are, but, but that's something we've run into before. The rear brakes on GT500 are a little bit different. So I mean, we've had a lot of people who just swap out, I believe it's the bracket from the GT500 to the GT and put the big brakes on the back. It's well worth putting a 14-inch rotor on the back. I mean, it really makes a difference. A long time ago, we did uh, brake testing, and my numbers are going to be off a little bit because it's been a long time. But the, uh, with the stock rotor, it's something like six, 700 degrees in there somewhere. We had the 14 inch rotor and the temperatures jumped up to like an eight, 900 range. And we put full on racing brakes in the back and they're up in the, in the 12, 11 to 1200 range. So it seems like the more brake you put on the back of the Mustang, especially with my suspension, uh, the more brake that you use. So yeah, I mean, uh, you have to call in and, and check. There's, a, there's a, a trick to putting the big rotors in the back of the GT500. Okay, uh, we have one more comment from Kobe. Uh, he said it, he is a, has a GT and has only upgraded the front to the GT500s. Okay, and it's really easy to put the 14-inch the, uh, rotors in the back. And it's, yeah, it's really simple and easy, quick and easy. I, I like quick and easy. So. Okay, and uh, right now we don't have any other questions. Anybody else have anything else? So one thing I did want to mention, Kenny, and, and to everybody that's out there that went through the Transform Your Driving Experience workshop this past week. It was a four-day workshop, and Kenny is adding a bonus on Monday, and he is going over. Well, why don't you tell him what you're going over? It's better uh, than well, telling We didn't have a chance to talk about the driving stuff. Uh, I only mentioned the driving stuff, so we're going to uh, talk a little more about uh, driving and how Mustangs, I use a whole different line uh, for Mustangs. Uh, you know, late apexes, and then we were going to use some videos from our Speed Therapy Academy alumni uh, that we used uh, in, in, in the academy for driving coaching. So it's kind of like it's got Monday nights all about driving. And uh, also remember, uh, Kenny does a 15-minute consult, so if you have questions that um, is a little more complex than answering here, um, you want to talk to a person, you can schedule that 15-minute consult. Um, and I think so the bonus session speed therapy academy uh is starting september 14th so if you're interested make sure you register for that we have we are going to be at an event uh september 18th uh it's a local car show similar to they're trying to make it similar to the uh woodward dream crew so if you want a, a, a mini mini woodward yeah mini so if you're interested join us there we will be doing the speed are the cars and coffee live from that show so tune in and it should be interesting because it's our first out of studio show so we'll see it might be fun just to sit to, through and see how many technical difficulties we have uh, well, yeah, you know, we're really really good at technical difficulties so anyway I got a question Carrie uh -huh. I know you've got the uh, the replays of the uh, workshop for the people that registered uh, and the, the, those are up through Tuesday night I think can people still sign up to see the replays? Yes, uh -huh. they have to register. Uh, Brad, can you find the link to register for the um, the Transform Your Driving Experience workshop? Yeah, you can do a binge watch on that. And we are going to be playing those replays over the weekend on the Speed Therapy Society Facebook group. So if you're a Speed Therapy Society Facebook member, you will see them there as well. If you did go to the workshop, we do send out an email with all the links. This I think they're, it's either going out today or tomorrow, so you can make sure you watch it before they come down on Tuesday. Okay, and they're up to midnight Tuesday. And that's when the uh, the early bird special is uh, going down as well. Okay, it looks like we might have one more. Yeah, um, I don't know, Tony. Uh, is a 285-35R19. Uh, yeah, that, that's what I like, is a 285-35. 285-35 is a somewhat tall tire, and that's what I like. I like my wheel size at like 18 for racing because race tires only come, or for the most part, mostly come in 18s. I like 19 for the street and track days because there's a good selection of tires in there. 
plus it gives you a little taller tire. Mustangs like tall tires. And to me, 20 inch wheels are for show. Uh, so yeah, mm -hmm. uh, 285 on uh, on an S550, yeah, on any, any of them. Uh, 285, 35 is, is a great tire package for Mustangs. So there you go. Okay, I think that is it for our questions for today. Oh, we forgot, next weekend is Labor Day weekend. What's happening, Kenny? Encore? Encore presentation. I, I, I need a day off. We've been, going, we've been going really strong here for a couple of weeks, so it'd be, it'd be nice to have a day off. But it's an encore presentation next week. Uh, if there's anything you'd like to see again, uh, send it into the comments, and we'll see about getting uh, that episode up. So, okay. If there's no more questions, we can probably wrap up almost on time today. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Okay, for, for those who are going to join me Monday night, I will see you Monday night. Uh, for our Cars and Coffee people, it's going to be two weeks. Uh, again, check out the Speed Therapy Academy. I absolutely guarantee whatever you spend on the Academy will save you multiple times over in the future. So it's, not, it's, not, it's, an, it's an investment uh, in your future. Trust me, you will save uh, by not making the mistakes I made. Okay, so we'll wrap it up for the day, and um, hope you all can join us Monday night. There's, there should be something there for you to click and sign up. We talk about driving. So with that, I will either see you Monday night or I will see you in two weeks. So have a good rest of your weekend. Bye, everybody.